brought up to be judgmental. We are all brought up to use judgmental behavior. And it's not good, but it's been happening since man first began. Why? Because Allah gave us an ego. Allah put an ego in us, and it's our ego. What's our ego? Any, any, anybody who can explain in even one sentence, what's our ego? What's our ego? Pride. Pride. Pride's a massive... Who said pride? Who said pride? Yeah, pride is a big part of our ego. So, when, when do we normally use our ego then? What kind of situations, guys? Any, any suggestions? What kind of situations do we normally, we use our ego? Our ego starts to grow, wake up. Conflict. Conflict. When you're angry. Yeah, when you're angry, when somebody's challenging us, yeah? When somebody's confronting us, pointing the finger at us. And suddenly we go into what we call is fight or flight, yeah? It's a fight or flight state. So either we're gonna stay and fight that person or we're gonna run. And that's actually very important. We need that instinct. We need that part of our brain to work because that's how we survive, yeah? If you're crossing a road and you didn't see the car coming and suddenly you see it, instantly we've gotta go into fight or flight. We've gotta run, yeah. we've gotta get out of the way. If there's a wild dog in front of us, fight or flight. Any kind of threat, we need it. But unfortunately, when our pride comes in the way and we're in a confrontation with somebody, then we don't want to lose that confrontation. We don't want to lose the argument. We want to win the argument. Right? And quite often, even if we know we are in the wrong, we still need to win the argument, right? And so we deliberately, we're going to make noises, we're going to make responses in that confrontation where we know, even before we make that response, we know it's going to upset the other person. But we still make the response. We still do it. Even though we know it's going to cause the other person then to respond back to us. The tennis match is going to start. And we know as well that afterwards it's going to affect my relationship with this person. This person's not going to talk to me. I'm not going to talk to them. It's going to be days, maybe even weeks, months. Yeah? And then I know at the end we're going to have to pick up the pieces, say sorry, yeah, you know what, I was rude, I shouldn't have said this, said that. Such hard work, isn't it guys? It's such hard work, yeah? This ruins, it destroys relationships, okay? This natural tendency we have to, to want to win an argument it leads us into such dark places in our lives. But I want to start first by just asking, what, if I were to ask anybody here, if you were to put, if you were to think about the word judgmental, what does it mean to you? So if somebody is being judgmental, what are they doing? Any suggestions? Criticizing, picking faults. Uh, Criticizing, sorry. picking faults. Anything else? What comes within judgmental behavior then? Arrogance. Arrogance, big one. Hatred. Hatred. Wow. It's another big one. Unconsciously <laughs> looking down on somebody. Looking down on somebody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, picking sides, undermining people. Fantastic one. And guys, if, if I were to look in the dictionary now, if this was a dictionary or this was a dictionary, I looked into it and I found the word judgmentally in here, what do you think it would say? It's not going to say, it's not going to have a whole paragraph. Because people have said many things here. In its simplest form, 
Okay, in the dictionary, it says to simply be overcritical. To be overcritical. Okay, so to be too critical. For example, a very simple example might be um, I might see this book and maybe I don't like the cover. Yeah, so I might say, that's a, that's a horrible cover. That's a really horrible cover design. Uh, They're drawn by the hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, such a horrible cover design. Now that, I'm using the word horrible, maybe the person who made it is sitting here. And I'm telling that person that's quite a horrible cover design. Now, that is a judgmental response. That's, that is judgmental behaviour. And the reason why is because the person who I'm saying it to, he's going to feel what? What's he going to feel? Good. He's going to feel bad. Good. Maybe embarrassed. Look at all these people sitting here. In front of all these people as well. You're going to feel embarrassed, humiliated. Yeah? What's he going to feel about me? Judgmental. Sorry? Like you are judgmental. Yeah, that I'm judgmental, that I'm nasty, I'm rude. Yeah? English, unappreciative. Yeah, absolutely. I don't appreciate what he's done. Yeah? And he's going to feel what about me? He's going to like me? He's not going to like me, is he? He's going to lose respect for me. He's going to think, next time you want something from me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see then. Yeah. Next time you make something, then you watch what I say. And so to be to be judgmental, guys, is to be overcritical. Now, what Bajan here said about Allah being the judge, yeah. I want to clarify this, Bajan, as well, because Allah is the ultimate judge. But I believe Allah is never judgmental. Because to be judgmental is to be overcritical. Allah is never overcritical for me. Allah is always just. So whatever punishment he meets out to anybody, it's proportionate. This means that it is based on the, the, what they've done. Yeah. So Allah's punishment, I believe, is never judgmental. Allah is the judge. But guys, there are two real massive differences between judgmental and making a judgment. Any idea what? It's making a judgment based on the facts that you know, whereas judgmental is making a judgment without knowing the background, the context. Of it. Yeah, kind of. Fantastic. But if I give that a bit more clarity, a bit more, a bit more sort of clarity on, on what this difference is. Judgments we must all make all day, every day, to survive. Yeah? For example, when we wake up in the morning, we have to make a judgment on what time to wake up. You've got to make a judgment on what to wear, how fast to drive, what to eat for breakfast. Yeah? So these are all judgments that we must make to keep ourselves and our families, our loved ones, safe. Yeah? What bill should I pay today if I don't pay this bill? So these are judgments. This is totally different. We now see, yeah? It's totally different from being judgmental. So to be judgmental is to be unfair. It's to be mean. It's to be nasty. It's to be overcritical. So that's, that's kind of a, a real key difference that we've got to get straight first, you know, in our heads of, okay, so to make a judgment, that's fine. It's judgmental behavior that's dangerous, that's poisonous, yeah, for me, for my family, for my community, yeah. Even in our workplaces where we work, what if I were to say to you all guys, who here works? Who's got jobs where you work with other people? So where you work, guys, do you ever see maybe a manager or a supervisor <coughs> talking down to other people? Yeah? 
Why haven't you got that done yet? You're not working quickly enough? Yeah? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? And even, I mean, I'm sure we're all family people here as well, yeah? So who's got children here? It's this big, lots of hands going up now. So, you know, we've got children. When we're in our home, let's have a little think about when we're at home and maybe our child or our sibling or even our husband or our wife, they do or say something that upsets us. How do we respond? What's the first response we give normally, naturally? <laughs> some big, we've got some very big smiles coming now. Why have we got such big smiles? I think mine's the biggest. How do we normally respond? Come on, have some. We're angry. We do, don't we? And what? Some fishy expression. <laughs> Give me back to that. Yeah, you know those. <laughs> so what, hold on, what you've said there, that tells us then that maybe judgmental behavior is also non-verbal. Yeah. So we don't, yeah. yeah. So we could be judgmental. We could make somebody else feel very uncomfortable yeah. without even saying a word. Yeah. Yeah. Are you starting to get the idea, guys, about how big this issue is? Because when we start to think about judgmental behavior, this is when I started to really research this word, yeah? Because when the lockdown began, I had already started to work for many years with families, with parents, with school staff, with employers on how to stop arguments. And when the lockdown hit, we all saw in the news, yeah? The figures of violence, of domestic violence, murder, rape, these figures were going up. Everybody was going crazy. So I started to really give this some thought and that's when, I don't know, Allah's work maybe, this word came in my head. I started to think about this word. I started to think, what does this word mean? Even I didn't know properly. I looked it up in the dictionary, huh? Overcritical, it's that simple. So then if it means overcritical, then maybe if I think about m the whole history of man and I start to think of any, any dark chapter in man's history, if I think about slavery, if I think about sexism, yeah? How women have always been treated in the world. If I think about racism, if I think about this big difference between the rich and the poor, yeah? If I think about what's happened, what happened in Germany, you know, with the Jews, if I think about what happens, what's happening now in Palestine, in Kashmir, in India, if I think about what's happening in Syria, in the Yemen, in so many parts of the world, this is all, and I tried then to think, okay, is this all started with somebody being judgmental? Of course it is. It all began, each and every conflict, each and every evil that man has committed, that human beings have committed, have all started with somebody going, I'm better than you. Yeah? I deserve more than you. So, that's what really started the book. And that's how I started to write the book. And I started to research this whole thing of what, how, so how big is this issue? And it's so big that really it includes everything, every issue, whether that's to do with money, family life, marriage, business, yeah, community, absolutely everything, even guys, even the way that we treat the planet, even the way that we treat the planet, even our abuse of the environment, 
We do this because we think we can. We do this because we think we are superior even to the earth, even to Mother Nature. Allah's Qudrat. We think, yeah, we can. We're human beings. Even this is judgmental. So really, I mean, this book should be this wide, I think. Yeah. yeah? I think if we were to write about everything, it would maybe be this wide. But... How can we put it right? You know, what are... What's the solution? How can we change our responses from angry knee-jerk, short-tempered responses to non-judgmental responses. How can we do that? Any thoughts? Any ideas? I'm asking you this practically. Not to yeah? be critical. Not to be critical. <laughs> but how do we do that? How can we be not critical? Think we think before we speak. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's about ra raising awareness and giving people the skill set in order to uh, uh, be aware that they are being judgmental and perhaps put a stop to it if they are being. Fantastic. Be, be more tolerant. Be more tolerant. Yeah. And it's balanced criticism. You have to be tell something wrong, right or wrong. So it's have to be actually balanced how you can tackle this and that's the. 100%, 100%. And, and because we are, you, what you've all said is absolutely right, you know, that think before we speak, be more balanced, yeah? If the other person is being judgmental, stop them from being judgmental. <laughs> How though? How are we going to tell somebody that they're being judgmental? It's the title of the book, isn't it? So, so if I say to you, you're being judgmental. Is this not me being judgmental? I think there might be a distinction between appropriate and inappropriate judgment. Go on. I've got, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's about what, not what you say, it's how you say it. Okay, yeah. Okay. I agree, totally. I mean, it's also what you say. The words that you choose. Yeah, surely the words that we choose are so important. Yeah, but yeah, you're absolutely right. It's also how we say those words, how we use our expressions, our body language. This all makes either a judgmental response or a non-judgmental response. So what I started to do, guys, was exactly what you're doing here, right? How can we be non-judgmental? How can I start to teach people how to be non-judgmental? <clears throat> and the very first thing that came into my head, guys, was that first response. That's the first response that gets us into trouble. Yeah? It's the angry response. Yeah? It's that look. Very famous look now, sister. Yeah? It's that first response that we must first stop. Okay? That's step one. If you want to, if somebody said something to you that's made you angry, that's irritated you, maybe your child's misbehaved, maybe you got a phone call from school, and then your child arrives from school, yeah? Where you're normally gonna say, oh, yeah. <laughs> What's this I've had? <laughs> Yeah? Or your missus, she's put too much salt in the, the food. Not enough. It's worse. For me, for me, it's not enough. Yeah? It's when she doesn't put enough salt in the... So it's that first response. Number one, it's that first response we must stop. So stop the knee-jerk response. Why? Why should we do it? Look, guys. If we, want, if we want to stop the knee-jerk response, first we must understand why we want. Otherwise we don't want to do it. Otherwise it feels good, it feels great. Yeah? To go bang, straight in. It's a bit therapeutic. Just in that moment it feels good to shout. 
puts us in control. But then, as I said at the start, remember, when you, when you go in like that, then you have to pick up the pieces. It doesn't do your relationship any good. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help the other person, it doesn't help the child or your wife or whoever. It doesn't help them. It ruins relationships. So, what we have to do, guys, is we have to motivate ourselves. We have to give ourselves a reason why I'm going to stop that response. It's not easy. And you have to keep practicing it, okay? So I'm going to stop this response. Why? Number one, I don't want to argue with this person. I don't want the argument. It's a headache. Yeah? Why should I want an argument? Number two, I love this person. I care about this person. Yeah? So, I don't want the argument. I care about this person. I want to be in control. I want to be in control. I don't want to lose control. Yeah? Guys, when we're in control, we become powerful. The only way we can have control is with patience and controlling that knee-jerk response. Guys, it's that knee-jerk response that's ruined human history. That one knee-jerk response. So number one, stop the knee-jerk response. Okay, why? I don't want the argument. It's a headache. I care about this person. Yeah? And I want to connect to this person. I want to problem solve. Yeah? Come on, guys. Everybody, we want the solution, yeah? We don't want the argument. We want the solution. Imagine a dunya, imagine a world where everybody, if they're angry with each other, where everybody first stopped. Yeah? Thought this through first. Just one second it takes. One second. To make your intention. Yeah? To say, right, okay, I'm feeling angry. I'm not going to blow. Yeah? I want to connect with this person. I want to teach this person something. Yeah? I want to bring this person closer to me. This is success, guys. And this is, for me, I believe, this is the real test. Yeah? This is Allah's, this is Allah's biggest test for us. Okay? And then thirdly, yeah, I want to problem solve. Okay? So my three steps here are stop, connect, resolve. Okay? We've talked about stop. So connect. How are we going to connect? Now remember, this is my little boy. This is my son. Yeah? He's come back from school. His teacher telephoned me. She said he's broken a window. And he was rude to me. Yeah? We sent him home. Two days exclusion. So he comes home. Yeah? Step one. Yeah. I'm going to stop. I'm not going to I'm not going to blow up. Okay? Because guys, the other thing is, if I blow up, what am I teaching him? Same. Yes, as he grows up and he gets angry, he's going to do exactly the same. It's all learned behavior. This is the big problem. Yeah? That if we want our younger generations to be non-judgmental, to be powerful, and full of love, yeah, and power, we've got to show it for, we have to demonstrate it, <laughs> yeah, we have to be that walking, talking example, so, so I'm going to stop myself, and the first thing I'm going to say to him, is I'm going to say, son, we need to talk, yeah, I got a phone call from your school, yeah, and I'm really quite upset. Yeah? This is what your head teacher said. But let's talk about it. Yeah? Because I'm upset and I'm sure that you are upset as well. Yeah? So talk to me. Tell me what happened. Yeah? 
Because, son, this is very serious. Yeah? You know, what you've done, it's very serious. You could have hurt yourself. You could have hurt somebody else. So let's, let's, let's solve this problem together. Let's work together. So look at this, guys, right? What I've done here is I've done step one and I've done step two. What was step two? Connecting with him. How do we connect? We show empathy. What's empathy mean? Everybody knows sympathy. What's the difference, guys, between sympathy and empathy? You, you put yourself in that situation. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. So, <clears throat> sympathy is... Oh, did the teacher exclude you? Oh, never mind. Here, have a cup of tea. Have some juice. It'll be fine. Yeah, this is sympathy. I'm giving nothing to him. But if I give him empathy, I'm showing him, I'm demonstrating to him, I'm making him believe that I know how he feels. And when I do that, guys, he's connecting with me. He's coming closer to me. Right? But I think maybe some of you are thinking, hold on, he's just smashed a window. Why are you bringing him closer to you? Yeah? Almost, you're almost excusing what he's done. Yeah? Why do you think, guys, it's important to connect with him first? To show him first that I understand how he's feeling. And he understands how I'm feeling. Remember I said, this is very serious. I'm very upset. Yeah? I'm very upset. So what I'm doing, guys, is on an emotional level, I'm connecting with him first. Okay? If he, if he believes that I'm angry with him, I think he's stupid, yeah? I think he's selfish. I think he's naughty. He's never going to solve the problem with me. So what I must do first is bring him close to me first. Mm -hmm. As soon as I connect with him and show him empathy, he's ready then mm -hmm. to talk about the part he played. Yeah? How he's going to put it right. This is the this is the this is the the aim of every parent, guys. We want children who can problem solve independently. Is this right? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This is what we're all supposed to be doing now. Yeah? We have to be problem solving independently. The only way, and this is not from me, guys. This is from world leading developmental psychologists who have said the only way that you can bring up children who can problem solve independently is if you first guide them towards the solution themselves. Don't give them the solution. Yeah? Give us an example, somebody, of when we give our children the solution. We don't let them think about the solution. We give them the solution. Any idea? Any kind of situation where we might do that? Where we might make that mistake? It's everything, like starting from young children when they want, we want to help them, for example, doing their uh, shoelaces, or with every little thing. Yeah. And then feeding, feeding them, yeah. if they don't have them, yeah. letting so, them feed themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, if a child says, if a child picks this up and they're not supposed to, you say, yeah, why, why are you picking that up? Don't do that, do this. Why did you do this? If you did that, this would never have happened. So what we're doing is we're giving them all the answers from ourselves on the plate. We're not teaching them to come up with the answers themselves. So this is why. I've stopped my response. I've connected with my son. Yeah? And then I've said to my son, now, we talked about how I feel, we talked about how you feel, but how do you think now? What can we do to put this right? And what do you think? How are you feeling now? 
about what you did. When you talk to him with love and respect, yeah, he's going to be the first one. He's going to say, Dad, I wish I didn't do that. I'm so sorry. I wish I didn't do that. And then you're going to say, you're right. And, and I bet even now, you know, you're feeling so frustrated that you made this mistake. So now let's talk about the solution. Let's work together. How can we put it right? Now remember, see this guys? I'm not going to give him the answer. He's going to give me the answer. He's going to say, Dad, I'm going to write a, sorry, I'm going to write a letter, say sorry to the head teacher. Yeah? And I'm going to do this. I'm gonna do They're thinking creatively then, yeah? They're thinking the same, right? So what can I do now? And when he says that, I will say, yeah, you know what? That's a great idea. That's a very good idea. Plus, as well, you know, when you do something wrong, there is a sanction. There's a consequence. Yeah? So you're prepared for that. Yeah, this was the, remember, this is the agreement we have. Yeah, when you do something wrong, there is a, a sanction. We, I don't like using the word punishment. Yeah, I prefer to say consequence or sanction. Yeah, so I'll say, you know, and he'll say, yes, Dad. Yeah, I know. I agree. That's the agreement. So I'll do that. But what, so what, this is the, such a big difference, isn't there, guys? Yeah, yeah. between me going, ah, whoosh, you this, you that, get in your room. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, and then man to man, respectfully, with love, respect, and patience. Mm. This was so much more effective. Why? He still loves me. He's still he's connecting with me. He believes that I believe him. I understand him. I understand the mistake he made. And I helped him problem solve. Wow. Guys, this means that when something bad happens in our family, it actually brings us closer. It should bring us closer. These are excuses, reasons for actually making our relationships better. So this is how we can turn positives into, uh, sorry, negatives into positives. Yeah? One other thing that I'm, I, I love to share with everybody is this, 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 this example, again, um, uh, Dr. John Gottman, who, whose work I used, whose research I follow, um, he's over in the States, and I've been so lucky, I've spoken to him via Skype as well, uh, because when, when I first started to work with parents uh, and with children with serious behavior problems, I began to contact them and he contacted back and we had Skype meetings, yeah, and it was so exciting. But one of the things that he said to me, he said was, he said, Rahel, it's so powerful that we, most parents, we sometimes don't realize that you can turn your own mistakes into your advantage, okay? So for example, if we do shout, or if we do swear, or if we do, yeah, raise our hand, I know we all feel terrible after that, yeah? As soon as we've done it or said it, we say, oh God, why did I do that? Why did I do that? I'll tell you now I did that half an hour ago, <laughs> in the car, on the way here. My wife is sitting here, three kids in the back, one kid, she's playing a game on the iPad, yeah, she's got the volume up. My other daughter, she's in the back, she's saying, turn the volume down. I said, no, turn the volume down. No. Yeah? And I went, Aisha, you need to turn the volume down. <laughs> right. Why? I'm reading the sat-nav, I'm driving, I'm late. 
Yeah? As soon as I said that, I, I thought to myself, why? Why did you have to do that? Yeah? Why could you not, why could you not hold the response and just talk to her? Yeah? And this is me. <laughs> right? But that's why this is so important, you know. Well, you know, the, what's the point to sound there is because of the pressure and the stresses yes. and the busyness. Yeah. That is what makes oh. us really oh. flip and, and, and uh, yeah. make those instantaneous. hundred percent. But Bajan, it's also, it's also, I, I, I truly believe, it's also because we have been brought up yeah. in this way. Yeah. Yes. As we grow up, all the adults around us, our parents, our older siblings, we watch them. All our lives we watch them. Hey, why'd you do that? Shut up! Come on. So what I'm saying here, what this says, is that we can slowly rewire this brain. Okay? We could slowly retrain, because the, the brain can be retrained. This has been proven. Okay? How do we learn? Our brain is full of neurological connections, neurons, little tiny neurons. As a baby, we're born, one baby is born with more than 8 billion neurons in the brain. These are neurons that are ready. It's like an empty computer hard drive, waiting for data, waiting for information, waiting for input. Now this is a newborn baby. At our age, we have billions more. Yeah? And each and everything we see and hear and do, or somebody does to us, this makes a recording here. And whenever that experience is repeated, that recording, it becomes more and more clear, more and more deep, yeah? Somebody said to me, it's a bit like, you know if you walk through a forest, yeah? The first time you walk through a forest, you're not gonna leave very much yeah, track. Sure. If you go the same route again and again and again, this becomes permanent or it becomes a path, a clear path. Yeah. This is how our neurons, the connections in our brains work. So imagine guys, if we're bringing up a child and we're always shouting at them, yeah? If, if we teach them that angry means shout, okay? and we do it every single day, that's all they know. They don't know anything else. So, it's possible to rewire our brains through our intention, yeah? See, if we want it badly enough, if you want to change it, it has to come from us, from the parents, yeah? So, um, uh, what, what do we all think so far? Is this making sense? Absolutely. It does, yeah, yes it does. Yeah? Mm -hmm. who, who feels like they could start to think about this? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> who thinks it would be easy? <laughs> it's not easy. just there's something to tick back and tell us. Yeah. Stop. stop. This is the big one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggie. Yeah. Stopping. And but the reason why I, I go into detail about stop is because first we must we must have the desire to stop. And and the way that we can have the desire, the motivation, the inspiration to stop is to just say to ourselves, I don't want that fight. I don't want the fight. Why should I want the fight? Yeah? This fight means anger, relationship breakdown, shouting, screaming, things being broken, and then one week, two weeks, three weeks, no talking. It's horrible, guys. It's horrible. But anyway, just getting back to... Okay, just uh, see here. So where do you get that inspiration, motivation? And that is where 
you know, religious teachings are so important. The Quran and the Sunnah is constantly inspiring and motivating you. Okay? So that is where you get the motivation seriously. Not from the TV, not from the politicians, not from anyone, but the Quran and the Sunnah. Definitely not the Quran and Sunnah is constantly telling you, you know, be kind, be good, be nice. Isn't it? Yeah. What, what, what does that mean? You need to read it. You need to listen to religious and have those religious books and those beautiful, you know, obviously the Quran is one of your biggest yeah. inspiration when you read it. Uh, it with, with translation, of course. That is why you need to. And say with books of Ahadith. Mm -hmm. So the inspiration, you're not going to get it from the sky or anywhere, but from the religion and... and yeah. Mm. But just to finish up, sorry, you, you were going to say something? No, I have a question. Go. Okay, um, you know, in some situation, we tend to punish a child, maybe just face the wall, just to get them to correct what they <coughs> do. Mm -hmm. Okay, when if a child does something bad, and you don't want to get angry in responding to what the child has done, are we allowed to punish a child just to correct them, or just by facing the wall, and when they are done, maybe five minutes, ten minutes, and you call them back and tell them what they've done is wrong, and they have that connection? Is that a way, a good way? Yes, I think it is. But remember, you must have this agreement with the child first. Yeah? So the child then knows what to expect. Yeah? So they know, if I'm going to be naughty, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, because this is the agreement. This is what I've agreed with my, with my parents. Yeah? Okay. It's like this a transaction. Yeah, this is Gee. really important. This is what we were talking about last night with the Professor Ahmed, actually, about consent being Gee. so important in our, as, as a choice. So we're giving this, this child the uh, uh, gaze, honor, you know, his little oh, child, oh, oh. giving him that yeah, okay, give us your consent and approval and your permission to agree to this. We both agree now, <laughs> let's respect it. <laughs> so the, the consequence is not coming before. Have, like every first offense doesn't have any punishment. So you need to agree first, so the next time, yeah. then when you not do that, it's yeah. become judgment. And also, agree the punishments with them first. Yeah, give them, as, as Bajan here said, he said, give them the respect, make them feel valued, and say to them, look, just like daddy or mummy, if we're driving, if we drive too fast, we have to, we get a speeding ticket, yeah, okay, if we don't pay a bill, they cut the gas off, okay, just like we have to face consequences, you have to face consequences, so you, you, let, let's, Let's think about this. What consequences should there be for you? Yeah. So if you do do something wrong, or say something wrong, let's agree now. What are the consequences? Have it written down. I think there's two, two, two things. You're assuming, forgive me for but you're assuming that this, you know, this relationship exists, yeah. or the capacity for this relationship exists. Uh -huh. And it might not be. Yeah. But secondly, that the other person would agree to, to, to this. Yeah. Now, now, initially, you might not have that initial relationship. You might not have that buy in. Yeah. So, how would you overcome that? Because, I mean, culturally, historically, this yeah. is a relationship which is going, going on. Sorry, Dr. So not No, no, that's a great question. Great question. And you don't have this framework, but you're assuming that a framework exists in order yes. for this to, to occur. Absolutely. So, so, what would you suggest, for example, it might be easy with the child, yeah. you have control, but with a sibling or a parent, this is not going to be, this is not going to work. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Forgive me. I, 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 no, it's fantastic. It's a great question. It's a great question. And you're not the only person to ask the question. There are so many people that ask the same question. Yeah? Which is, you know, it's all well and good. You can imagine the, the scenario between you and a child, and then you, take the, you hold the child's hand and you take them through the problem solving. Let me give you an example of. Um, well, firstly, let me just say that it's all based on your relationship with that human being, yeah? On your rapport with that human being. If you are constantly, whether that's, this is a child, whether this is your own child, whether this is a child maybe that you've just met, okay, that you've never known before, 
whether it's a work colleague that you've never met before, somebody, a new manager, anyone, a sibling, a parent, okay? When, when you deal with that other human being, right, with patience, empathy, and love, you are, even if you don't want to, you're building a, an attachment relationship with that person, okay? So an attachment relationship is basically where there's trust that's starting to build, to create between you. There's a connection that you're creating with that person, yeah? And how, I just want to give you a quick example of how that translates, how I can use stop, connect, resolve with anybody of any age, right? I'll give you an example. My wife came home uh, uh, from work and she looked very upset, yeah? And, and uh, you know, at first I thought, mm, shall I, mm, I give it a... Give it half an hour or so, yeah? I don't, want to, I don't want to act too quickly. So I gave it a little while, and she was getting quite, you know, irritated. She was maybe sort of getting angry with the kids. Da, da, da. She starts cooking in the kitchen. So I went into the kitchen, and, and so, so remember, I stopped my own response, yeah? I didn't like what she was doing. Immediately I could see, oh, something's happened, yeah, at work and you're bringing it home, you're taking it out on the kids. Yeah? That's not, that's not acceptable, it's not the kids' fault. So I stopped my own response. Secondly, I went in there and I said, how are you doing, is, is everything okay? Yeah, you don't look too happy, you, are you okay? Yeah, put my hand on his shoulder, yeah? I said, what's going on, is everything okay? And, and remember what we said at the start, guys, it's all in what and how you say it, yeah? If I'd have said, what's going on? Yeah, what's going on? Is everything okay? <laughs> Look at the difference. So I put my hand on his shoulder and I said, is everything okay? Yeah? And instantly she just said, the stupid manager at work. <laughs> he did this, he said this to me in front of all the others, he said that to me. Yeah? Okay? No. Empathy. Watch this. Immediately I said, I bet that was I bet that made you feel so embarrassed. How awful. How horrible that is. You know? He didn't have to say that in front of the other staff. He could have taken you to one side. I bet that I bet you felt really embarrassed. Immediately, her head starts doing that. Yeah, 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 you're right. I felt embarrassed. I felt humiliated. So what am I doing? I'm just connecting with her. All I'm doing is bringing her close to me. And I'm making her believe that I know how she feels. Yeah? Immediately, guys. You know the pot that she's doing that in? Yeah? No, she's just doing that in it. <laughs> she just calmed her down. Right? Now... The developmental psychologists, they've proven this. As soon as you show a little bit of love, a little bit of empathy, yeah? That fight or flight state, that calms down, yeah? And something else I haven't told you is, guys, we have a nerve, a big fat nerve, it's called the vagus nerve. This goes from our, from our brain, okay? It goes in our body, and it connects to all the major organs. It connects to our stomach, heart, lungs, kidneys, liver. Yeah? This nerve, right, the job, the job of this nerve, so it's, it's spelt V-A-G-U-S, not Las Vegas, yeah? But the vagus nerve. Its job is to regulate all of our major organs, okay? And it's connected to the bottom part of our brain that deals with our emotions. <laughs> this is the last test, right? So the only time this, this nerve is doing the work properly, it's operating properly, is when we're relaxed. Okay? This is why, guys, when we're stressed, when our life is full of stress, we're getting ill. 
Okay? Because when we're stressed and we're anxious, the, our vagus nerve is not working properly. Okay? It's not stimulated. Yeah? So her vagus nerve, it started to work, it, and she started to calm down immediately. So then I said to her, so then we're already at the solution part, stage three, yeah? And I said, so, let's, let's work this out then, because obviously you're so stressed out, yeah? What do you think, what do you, think you could do then, tomorrow, yeah? How can you remember, I'm not giving her the answer on the plate again, yeah? She's gonna problem solve. Why? Because even adults, yeah, when we say, look, do this, and then it's, everything's gonna be okay. She's gonna think, oh, yeah, smart. He's a smart one, yeah? I'm the stupid one. He knows best. So again, we say, so, what do you think you can do then tomorrow? Yeah? Maybe, I mean, I remember when I had this situation with the manager, I remember I went, I took the manager in, yeah, uh, to the office, I said, you know, can, can I have a word? Yeah? And that I spoke to him privately, not in front of other people. This is what your manager did, yeah? And she's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, I've kind of given her the answer, but I, I didn't say you should do this. I said, this is what I did. Yeah? <laughs> and immediately she said, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. Yeah? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Yeah? I'm not going to say in front of the other staff. I'm going to pull him to one side. And I'm going to tell him how I feel. Yeah? And then... But I'm, I'm not going to be angry with him. Yeah? So, can you see what we're getting at here? Which is... Just if we, if we try to maintain a constant behavior of holding our own response, connecting with the other person and using empathy, all by itself we start to build attachments and connections of trust, yeah? Where relationships, they flourish all by themselves, you know? And it's almost like you can't lose. And really, it puts you in, it puts you in control. And Ryan, there's one more thing, you know, in institutions, so schools, uh, mosque, Gee. and uh, any other institution, what you have is uh, authority. And yes. So, so, and this is why, you know, having a really smart head teacher and good teachers who can exercise authority, mm. and, and of course they have a mandate as well, mm. and uh, so it's understood, you know, that as soon as, you know, have you noticed how ch ch children uh, in the playground are being naughty, running around and everything, eh? But as soon as you step inside the school, <laughs> have you noticed? I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, went to, yeah. I went to a very good school and, uh, you know, our head teacher, uh, I still remember Mr. Evans, yeah, no? <clears throat> it was a grammar school and it was very smart, yeah, no? The, the head teacher, he would be at the gates at half past eight. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he would obviously be in the corridors, uh, he would be in the assembly hall, uh, you know, he would be uh, outside at break time as well. So we would see that authority mm -hmm. figure. Mm -hmm. And so people, so I think there has to be that, and, and same in the home, there has to be a certain level of agreement and authority, mm -hmm. which uh, comes from the fact that, you know, you're in, you're spending on them, mm. caring for them, and you have so there is, you know, there is that part of it as well. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. Relationship. Yeah, hundred percent. But just to finish off the story about when I was in the car mm -hmm. and I shouted at my, raised my voice at my daughter. <clears throat> Gottman said to me, he said one of the most precious gifts you can give your children is to say sorry, is to apologize to them, is to demonstrate to them, yeah, that, that when we apologize, this is not us showing weakness. Mm -hmm. This is us actually showing strength and control, yeah? So immediately I said, look, Aisha, I'm sorry, I should not have raised my voice, yeah? There was no need to do that. 
But Aisha, can you see how Khadija was getting irritated? Yeah? Can you see that? And she went, yeah, yeah, all right, fair enough. <laughs> no argument. No argument, yeah? And just by saying sorry, I, it, I was in the driving seat again, quite literally. Yeah? So, because if we want our children to have the courage, it's not easy to say sorry, man. We know this. It's not easy to say sorry. If we want to have the courage, if we want our children to have the courage to say, it was me, and I apologize, I'm sorry about that. We have to demonstrate it to them. We have to play it out. <laughs> My throat is dry now, you know. <laughs> but that's, that's more or less, guys, uh, a very condensed version of, of what I'd like to share with everybody. You have some water.